when it uh, comes to how to enhance this traditional way of doing things in by using the data that we have. So that's where the data security or data-driven security assessments come into play. So what is a data-driven security assessment? So it is, again, we have been telling this since the beginning of our representation here that using the data that the organizations already have, augmenting it with uh, the traditional results that we have from the traditional assessments, and then coming up with a holistic picture for the organization to take, uh, to get more insights, intuitive insights into their risks, uh, risks that are uh, opposing uh, in, for, to the organization. So there are different types of uh, data-driven risk assessments. It's not just one kind. It will, uh, it varies from as simple as a typical vulnerability scan a small organization does to as uh, sophisticated as a AI-based tools like we have a uh, security uh, orchestration and automation response tools like SOAR today. So it varies from the comp in the complexity. It will be, uh, so let's talk from the simple to the complex. So when, when we talk about vulnerability scans and penetration tests, so vulnerability scanning. Uh, I think the organizations you're all working on, pretty much every organization performs a vulnerability scan. If not continuous, it will be weekly or monthly, or sometimes even uh, if, it, if the threat landscape the organization thinks is very small, they, they might be doing even quarterly or annually. But there is scanning going on across all the organizations. There's lots and lots of data that is coming up. But what organizations are doing today is taking it uh, in silos. So the results from these scans that are not being integrated with the other information that they're having. So uh, that's where uh, the holistic view of data comes into play. Now, um, okay, vulnerability scanning is one of the simplest ways of doing this. Now, what is the, what are the other things? Something called a breach and attack simulation tools that we have out, out there, like um, Simulate is one of them. Um, I think attack uh, IQ is is, the, is one of them. So what what does these tools do? Uh, most of the organizations already have these tools, so it's not that you'll have to go and uh, invest now, but it's already there. What do they do? They install agents in in the environment in the company's environment to get uh, to act like a to simulate the attack to act like an attacker simulating the attack like a data exfiltration attack. So, or email spoofing. So it, they will check the controls, the agent itself, it will check the controls that are available uh, within the organizations, how effectively they are working. So again, um, that is again one kind of a data-driven assessment that an organization can do. The other one is attack surface management. So that, is, that comes in a variety of ways. So it, uh, many, many big organizations like Microsoft, Fortinet, Mandiant, they have good tools for the external attack surface management, internal uh, cyber security attack surface management, and whatnot. What they do is continuously scan the environment, uh, be it continuous or periodic, but uh, again, to gather information um, and uh, try to understand if the attack surface has changed. So today, there is a new server that has been installed. So your attack surface has uh, and that is external facing, let's say. So that is the increase in your uh, attack surface. So th that's how uh, the organizations can understand if there's been change in their attack surface and accordingly implement additional controls or tweak the existing controls. The next one is, is uh, generic same solution, security information and event management. Again, like vulnerability scanning, most of the organizations have a same solution or a equivalent. It need not be a full-fledged same solution, but it can be a equivalent that gives alerts, that gives um, information to the respective stakeholders of the organization about, let's say, a potential event or potential incident. So again, there are many tools out there, like Sentinel-1 is one of them. Their EDR itself uh, can uh, give, like, uh, um, also have the capabilities of a seam, and there is Plunk, there's Arcside, Datadog, Logarithm, I mean, there's like a whole list of them. Again, organizations have this, but then how is it implemented matters the most. So they, it's again, not all the logs 
are fed into the same these to, by every organization. They have only limited set of audit logs. Maybe the access logs are sent. Maybe their critical assets uh, are being sent. There are a few applications which are not integrated because they have to build an API for that. So again, there is no time uh, for organization to do that. So uh, that's where you know the implementation matters. And then moving on to the sophisticated type of tools that organizations, bigger organizations generally prefer is SOAR, security orchestration, uh, automation, and response. This again, this, this, these tools learns as they perform the uh, alerting and response activities. And they will, uh, as they grow using the AI, ML technology, artificial intelligence, machine learning uh, algorithms, they learn and then they proactively detect future incidents as well based on, based on the previous data. So that's how effective these tools are. Again, it's not that every organization should do all of these. It's depending upon the organization's landscape, their industry they are in, their geographical location, and um, yeah, the risk appetite of their leadership, how risk averse or risk prone they are. Accordingly, they can choose one or a combination of these to augment their uh, sec the risk uh, management program they have today for security risks. Moving on, so again, so we I've talked about all of these different types of data-driven assessments and why should organizations take them up? We have been talking about this uh, since again, you know, the challenges of traditional assessments in a way trickle down to the benefits of data-driven assessments. So. They facilitate proactive risk management. So what is proactive risk management? Um, so in the earlier discussion also, we heard that organizations generally react to something that happens. But generally, they're not um, that uh, equipped with the, with the information to proactively uh, do something ahead of time to, like, you know, to prepare for ransomware in the future. Obviously, everybody thinks that, no, we are secure, and we don't uh, have any risks at the point. We don't want to um, do a ransomware assessment. We don't want to see where we are in terms of our security controls when it comes to ransomware, uh, some ransomware attacking us. So uh, this data-driven assessments will help organizations in detecting that. And then um, real-time dashboarding. So again, in the earlier discussion, we talked about dashboarding. So like all the different tools that organization has, it's 10 different dashboards for 10 different tools. Instead, uh, through this methodology that we are going to propose, we can have like a one dashboard where the executives can view the risks that are you know, futuristic, also that are existing, to take necessary actions uh, to, to, mitigate the, to mitigate those risks. And then the uh, other uh, benefit that we see here is collaboration between the risk team and the data team. Again, not working in silos. Everybody should come together to work towards mitigating the risks for the organization. At the end of the day, that is our so, uh, sole goal for every team. But then if you are working on silos, it's not going to work. So how data that is getting collected in all of these tools will be shared you know, that centralized dashboard to en enable the risk team or the security team within the organization to take necessary actions. So last but not least, compliance. So it always helps to have that futuristic view of, oh, maybe uh, we, we may have a potential violation of a compliance requirement from GDPR or um, from any other uh, requirement like uh, in India Data Privacy Act, let's say. So that, again, this dashboard and this holistic view will help the organizations do that. Um, so moving on, we, uh, here we have a high-level approach. Again, this is not one uh, solution-fits-all kind of a approach, but this is, uh, this is a like a generalized approach which organizations need to tweak based on their uh, needs, their appetite for risk, their uh, 
uh, how uh, their affinity to uh, budget that they have or affinity to spend on these tools. So the very first step, identify and define. So uh, like we have been talking about since morning today, what is your attack surface? What is your threat landscape? Again, that differs from industry to industry. That differs from organization to organization based on their size and also geographical area. So the healthcare companies in India, the risks will be different from healthcare companies in Europe or US. So uh, you have to, as an organization, you have to understand what, are, what is your threat landscape and then define those critical assets, typically called as crown jewels in our industry. So crown jewels for your organization that you want to protect. And um, once you have that, you will have a clear picture of what you're protecting. If you don't know what you're protecting, then how much ever you do, it's of no use. And uh, next is uh, baseline framework. So again, we are not saying that you have to completely replace the way you're doing assessments before. Like you, you're, uh, we are not saying that stop doing qualitative or you know stop doing the traditional way of do performing assessments. Do that against the industry leading standards such as ISO or NIST frameworks like 853 or cybersecurity framework from NIST or even CIS 18 controls, right? So all of these, the baseline framework is important for an organization to ensure that they are adherent to that particular standard, even with the different ways of doing it. So I'll get to that next, how it is helping them. But getting that baseline framework, what do they want to uh, you know, adhere, not adhere to, but then align with? So uh, because these standards are not compliance requirements. These are what organizations themselves proactively uh, come up to align with to ensure that they are at least meeting the hygiene, the basic cyber hygiene. So once we identify the framework, um, this needs to be mapped to the different techniques the attackers will use. Again, I talked about different tools earlier, like the SOAR, SIM, BAS, uh, breach and attack simulation. All of this, the result or the resultant risk is linked to the MITRE attack framework, which has the different tactics, techniques, and procedures that the uh, attackers are using or will use to attack or you know, launch some attacks. So this base framework needs to be mapped with MITRE attack framework. Again, how are we going to do that? So it's, it's, it's not going to be one-on-one -on -one map, of course, right? Because MITRE is something very, very technical. And the other base framework that I talked about is at a high level, qualitatively, how organizations need to worry about processes and people, while MITRE is, is more into technology part of it. So let's say MITRE has one of the tactics as uh, uh, privileged uh, es uh, escalation. So that obviously directly maps to our privileged access management capability within any of the frameworks that you choose. So let's say uh, one of the tools that you have, or a vulnerability scan, comes up with a vulnerability that talking about there is a privileged uh, uh, account that is open or you know the credentials are out there. Uh, using open source intelligence, you find the credentials. Uh, so you can directly map that and go back to your base framework. See how are your controls implemented there? Are you reviewing your uh, privileged uh, access on a periodic basis? Is there a person who left the organization with privileged access in the near past, like you know, a month ago or a two months back? And how did the uh, you know how are the controls implemented? So that's how you will map the base framework with the MITRE attack framework, so that you will get a holistic picture against the base framework of what is missing from the qualitative and also from the technical perspective. Now, um, choose the right assessment, assessment methodology. So by assessment methodology, I mean one of those different techniques that we have for performing data-driven risk assessments. So again, you don't have to invest now and get a new tool as an organization, but uh, you can always use the existing data that is coming and then map it to your, uh, sorry, to your other uh, data that, that is coming from the other tools, like from a SIM data is coming, vulnerability scanning the data is coming. How are you in, uh, how are you going to integrate this? Using this base framework, it is going to be 
useful, or uh, you know, it is uh, highly beneficial to map everything to that base framework to understand where the risks lie. And what needs to be tweaked at the fundamental level, you, you don't have to do it on a case-by-case -case basis. Once you identify a risk or once you identify a vulnerability, it's not just fixing the vulnerability would not help. You have to go back to your base controls to see what control uh, is missing or you know, what control is not implemented properly because of which this vulnerability has happened. So that is, that's where the right assessment methodology comes. Uh, so finally, and uh, again, so here the assessment, perform the assessment is written, but assessment again, it may be continuous depending upon the tool you choose, or uh, it can be periodic based on, again, the organization's affinity to spend. So they may not be doing sophisticated, using sophisticated techniques like SOAR and all. But whatever you're using, you have to perform the assessment. You have to prioritize what ne you, need, you need to do. It's a, uh, these are generic things that is expected of an organization that you know you have to prioritize. But what's happening in reality is just as and when we get the scan results, we, we just sit down, start doing it. Like, you know, okay, one, two, three, check, check, check. That's all. We are not prioritizing it. Prioritizing it and also not going to the root cause of the problem. So, yep. Um, so, yeah. So these are the typical uh, standardized approach, but again, these need to be tweaked for the organization's need, needs and uh, their uh, risk appetite and threat landscape, like I told. So, yeah, that's from our end. Uh, one, so uh, in order to, again, get more information about this or you know how we do data driven assessments we, uh, from Optiv, we perform these for our clients so you can always uh, reach out to our booth there we uh, you can uh, we will talk about that more and also we have a state of cyber governance report that we publish every year and uh, for that uh, you can always you know reach out to the booth so we can talk more about it the report talks about how in a particular industry how organizations are faring across the different capabilities, like when it comes to access management, asset, or when it comes to incident response. So we have the comparison across different industries. So you can always uh, visit us and we can walk you through how we have done it and how that would be useful for organizations to understand where they stand when compared to everybody else. So, yep, yeah, so that's us.